something we need to remember. Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he uphold from those who walk uprightly. Do you believe God's got your best in mind? Yes. Your good, good in mind? Yes. So how many times should I pray a day? How many times should I pray in a day? Somebody want to tell me? Don't stop. Don't stop? <laughs> All right. Pray continuously. Isn't that about it? Uh, over every little thing, Miss Sharon, you and I, uh, and we were talking about this in um, Wednesday night, for Wednesday night, how you let the, um, you ask the Lord during the day, um, what should I do, right? And then uh, you get a good idea, and what happens? <laughs> if it works out, she knows that it was really coming from the Lord. So do we talk do We talk to God all day long? Should we talk to God all day long? Yes. Amen? And so, uh, now Daniel actually had a physical prayer time three times a day. We know that. Morning, evening, and noon will I pray is what it says in Psalm 55 and verse 12. I'm going to put that on the screen, Marty. Psalm 55, 12 actually says, um, you know, most of us, or, or a lot of us, eat these uh, three meals a day. And that would be a, a time that you could definitely pray. Evening and morning and at noon I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Now one of the things that we need to remember is that if we do pray, pray and your mind wanders, you've you got to do something about that. So pray out loud. Pray out loud. God wants to. God wants us to hear. I mean, if we can't, if we can't keep our mind on the right track, and you pray out loud, you will find that your mind will be on the right track. And the Bible's 100% for praying out loud here. Uh, there's times when you can't pray out loud. Obviously, you know that would have been like Nehemiah. He was. He just uh, kind of whispered his prayer, and God answered it. Where should I pray? Well. Um, in Luke 22 and verse 39, uh, Jesus, as his custom was, he went up. As he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. Well, he was barely allowed to um, pray in, um, in public because so many people would have been following him and asking him for healing and such. But he was able to get this done because he went to have a special place. Some people have a special place in their house where they're not going to be so interrupted. Um, the, the place where you find to pray is God, you've got to find a place to pray. It doesn't have to be in a closet, but it, it might be in a special time. And um, some people kneel by their bed. We've been taught that as children to kneel down by our beds. The church is a good place to pray. Amen? Amen? And we do have many that their custom is when they come into the sanctuary, they will come and sit and pray before they, before they do anything else. So we respect that custom and we see that custom and it's, a, a, it's the right thing to do. Jonah prayed out of the belly of the fish. Nehemiah silently prayed to the God of heaven before the king. And um, Jesus prayed while he was on the cross. Hmm. Paul and Silas prayed when they were in prison. So who should you pray with? Well, you can have individual private prayers, or you can pray with others corporately as a group. And um, that's one of the reasons why the Lord's laid this on my heart, to share this little thing, you know, this little thing that you're going to be able to give away to some people. We have these little cards. And you can, you can pray for people. We can pray for intercession for people. Group prayers really unite the group members with each other and with God. And then the members don't feel like they're always struggling alone in their struggles. You can be comforted and consoled by others even as you're seeking for help. So we in this church have a wonderful group prayer that normally um, we take prayer requests and, we, and then we all kneel down to pray. Today we are going to do something a little different. Um, we are going to have a prayer time. But I'm going to tell you, ask you if you would take a look at um, somebody that's alongside of you uh, that you might know well enough that you would feel comfortable to pray with. Um, oh yeah, the couples are all coupled up, and the singles, <laughs> and uh, and if you aren't uh, aren't somebody that you can kneel down to pray with, you don't. We're not going to necessarily kneel down to pray. 
But we are going to take a look at our prayer, prayer sheet here. And so open that up again for me. And I want you to look on the back page. The back page we didn't talk about at all. This is called the Acts Prayer Model. By the way, positions for prayer, you know, the Bible talks about kneeling down. Jesus knelt down and prayed. The, the disciples knelt down and prayed. Uh, Daniel, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. Um, bowing down was an act, act of submission. He worshiped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. That was Abraham. Now, in the New Testament, in his letter to Timothy, Paul actually says, men should pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Whoa, now we're going over the top. If we follow the Bible, we might turn into, into charismatics, right? But you know what? Sometimes that is exactly what you want. You feel like doing. You feel like lifting your hands up to the Lord in prayer. It might be what you do at your home and more than here. They lifted their eyes up to heaven. Jesus lifted up his eyes and prayed. He knew from he knew that he was praying to somebody way, way, way up. You know, God is God is exalted. He's lifted up so we can lift our eyes. There's examples of people. Um, Jesus fell on his face and prayed. You can lie flat and pray. You can stand and pray. You can sit and pray. King David went in and he prayed, acknowledged the covenant that God had made with him. He sat before the Lord. Um, you can lie, pray lying in, in bed. Uh, King Hezekiah, he was sick. He was about to die. And he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. There's um, many times that you're, that especially if you're up north and it's cold, and you don't want to, you want to pray, you're going to just get in your bed and pray. I've seen people kneel down on their bed, in, on their bed instead of the cold floor. But um, there's all kinds of ways to pray, as long as our heart's fixed on, the, on it. So we've got those different kinds of prayers that was on the first page. Um, prayers for healing, comfort, guidance, thanksgiving, repentance, prosperity, enlightenment, wisdom, protection. And then this model that I'm going to look at on the back page, it's called ACTS. Now why would we want to have some kind of formula for prayer? Because, because sometimes we just wander through our prayers and we might most of us start by asking something right away. And that asking is a little bit selfish. So um, this one starts off with adoration. I'm going to need some mics, by the way, Marty. Can you get some mics, um, just like three mics to our uh, people that usually answer, like one to Dennis and one to Ray and one to B, um, one to... Uh, Donovan, if you would. Looking at this, it says, As in the Lord's Prayer, the Acts Prayer Model begins with adoring God. In French, um, they, they, a lot of people, oh, j'adore. So, they, they might talk about um, your dress. J'adore la robe que tu portes. You know, I, love, I adore the dress that you love, that you're wearing. And then somebody else might say, um, but my president of the of the conference of in Canada, of Quebec, he always said, um, "You only adore God." You know, like we use the word love. Oh, I love, I love this. I love that. I love that. But an adoration implies worship, and so he used to say, "On adore que Dieu." We only adore God, and what does that mean? We're going to ascribe to the Lord glory due to his name. God's our creator, our redeemer, and provider and sustainer. So if you don't mind, right now I'm going to lead us through a short adoration uh, thing. And um, I guess I'm going to ask us to pray, to pray. I'm going to lead this prayer and just give a sample of what it would mean to do this adoration and supplication all the way through. There's a difference between thanksgiving. I can thank my husband for taking out the garbage. You know, I can thank him for doing something, but I can say, I, um, I appreciate your kindness to me. I appreciate how patient you are with me. And you actually go into the character of the person, not just their acts. 
So you might find that it's hard to make a difference between adoration and thanksgiving, but we want to look at the character of God in, in, the, in that. So because this is going to be a prayer, I'm going to ask us to close your eyes if you can, and I'm going to pray through the Acts. Very, very short one, just, just to see what it, what it might be like. Father, as I praise you and thank you for who you are, I want to praise you and thank you that you are always merciful, you are always faithful, you are always ready to forgive. And as I praise you and thank you for that, Lord, I, I want to glorify your name. I, we confess, Lord, that we have all shall fallen short of the glory of God, and that there's many things that we need to do that we haven't done, even things of neglect, things that you've showed us to do that we haven't done. So, Father, I ask that you would actually forgive me that, forgive us that. And, Lord, as we ask you for that forgiveness, we also want to thank you that you sent your Son to die on the cross for us, that the, you have made a provision for us to have restoration and be able to come back to the Garden of Eden one day with you through the cleansing of Jesus Christ. And as I thank you for that, Lord, I do bring a, a, a request. I do request, Father, that each person that's here today, we would all have a renewing of our commitment to bring our prayers to you in a more, um, in a more, oh, more solid way, that be more regular, that we would talk to you all through the day, and that we would know that you are with us because um, I, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. That is just almost like the Lord's Prayer. And He's able. So now those people that you said that, that you've looked around and that, and that you're going to find somebody to pray with, um, this is a time to get up and join that if you need to move in your chair. And we're going to have just a little bit of time where that actually happens. So couples, but if you're not in a couple, please get up and find somebody to pray with. One other person. Not three, if you would.
disinterested souls a network of influences which will lead to surrender before the censor is thrown down. This is from a view in here in 1890, E.G. White. <laughs> Marty prays for the person that will come to talk to our kids. There'll be somebody that will come and talk to them. That's something that we all need to do is be the person that will come and talk. These are on your on your paper that we just looked at. But this one, Acts chapter 13, verse um, 2 and 3, says, One day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. Fasting and prayer. We're getting ready to have a pretty good feast day today. But there's times when you just turn down your plate, as we used to say, and that was a, a good thing. It gives you time to, to think. It gives you time to um, have have less all about my body and needs on my mind. I was wondering if we could ask um, Brother Donovan, you have a mic, and um, Ray and B. Could I? Oh, Dennis has one too. I was wondering if we could ask you, you um, elders, uh, to give us a short, a short closing, a prayer that's uh, more like a group prayer. We didn't take requests today, but we are asking that those requests that you covered them. So Brother Ray and then Brother B, um, please, one, two, three, four, okay? And we'll all bow our heads while the men, the men lead us in prayer. Dearest and most gracious, honorable Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this glorious, beautiful Sabbath day. The sun is shining, even though the storm is coming. We know the storm is coming that's going to end this world. And you're going to usher in absolute perfect righteousness. We're thankful so much that you have promised us this, that it will happen because you have never lied and you have never lost and you've never overcome. 
overslept. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You see the end before there was a beginning. Lord, we're so thankful that you're the perfect builder, the perfect planner, and you are so righteous, and you are all about making us holy and righteous. You're about making us like you are. I pray that we would just be in agreement with you in every way that this, this thing is going to, we could be together as we're supposed to be together, like a wheel and a smoke. Lord, I pray that this church would light, light up a fire, light up a fire that would start Florida and the whole America and the world, that this would wrap up shortly so that you can be vindicated and everything would be as it should. In the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Love my Heavenly Father as we call upon your holy and exalted name in heaven. You are God and beside you there is no other name. We thank you Lord for the message and for the privilege to call upon your holy and exalted name in heaven. Forgive for every sin, O oh Lord, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know the desire for our hearts, you know what we you have brought us through and what is yet for us to pass through. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will give us the strength to hold on to you and to show more dependence upon you. We thank you, Lord, for the peace that you have promised. Not peace from trouble, but peace in the trouble. Amen. Strengthen our faith in you, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will continue to be with us and in us. And may we be a blessing to others. Use us with all our faults and our flaws as instruments in your hands to point others to Christ and may we be drawn closer to you in the process. Keep us faithful unto you this day. We pray in Jesus' name.
of Jesus, our Father, we come to you today on your Sabbath day to honor you as a creator of not only the heavens and the earth, but of ourselves and our lives and the recreating of our souls to love you. And we thank you for loving us, for giving us grace, for giving us everything that we need for you to be able to save us, to present us to your Father, Jesus. So be with us. Keep us safe. Keep us in your hands. Amen. Thank you for, for never, never, ever leaving us. That we are always there. We're never alone. Amen. If we want you there, all we have to do is open our hearts. Open Amen. the door that you're knocking continuously and let you in. Amen. I want to thank you for that love, for your grace. Be with each one of us here in this place. Be with our extended family. Be with our friends and all of our relatives. Help us to be an example as you were here. That we were, would be there faithfully to help them you helped us. And again, thank you just for recreating us so that we may see you and live with you forever. In Jesus' sake, amen. amen. If you have a silent request right now, if you bow your head and whisper the name of those persons before God right now, let's continue just to bow our head one more. And Lord, you know what's on our heart. You know the silent requests that we're making right now and the people that we, we pray for all the time. And we didn't call their name out loud today, Father, and they needed healings and they needed close touch from you and they need your spirit. They need conversion. They need gifts of repentance. And as we, each one here, Lord, is offering up that intercession for those other persons, Lord. We thank you that you have heard and you will answer and you will make a way where there seems to be no way. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And the congregation said, Amen. 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 We're going to stand and we're going to sing number 269, Come Holy Spirit. That's our closing hymn. 269 in your hymn. 